Welcome to Kip TV. Today I'm going to read How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Every who, town, and who will liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of who will, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes he stood there on Christmas Eve, eating the hooves. Staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in who will beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe tree. hanging their stockings he snarled with a sneer tomorrow's Christmas it's practically here then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming for tomorrow he knew all the who girls and boys would wake Bright and early, they rushed for their toys. And then, oh the noise, oh the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in who will, the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing and they'd stand hand in hand and the hooves would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick with this coat and this hat. I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No, the Grinch simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and hitched up old Max. Then the grin said, get up. And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the hooves 
lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark. White snow filled the air. All the hoods were all dreaming. Sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claus hissed. And he climbed to the roof. Empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pitch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue. Where the little whose stockings all hung in a row? These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk, with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present pop guns and bicycles roller skates drums checkerboards tricycles popcorn and plums and he stuffed them in bags then the grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimbley then he slunk to the ice box he took the hoo's feast he took the hose pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why that Grinch even took their last can of hoo hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with the glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove, when he heard a small sound, like the coo of the dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small hoo, little Cindy Lou hoo, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny hoo daughter, who'd got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He taught up a lie and he taught it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix up up there, then I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. And the last thing he took was to log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the others whose mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the whose still abed, all the whose till a snooze, when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the tinsel the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Boo, boo to the hoos. He was grinchously humming. They finally got now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what to do. 
their mouths will hang open. A minute or two. Then the hoos down the whole roof will all cry boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch. That is simply must hear. So he paused as the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low. Then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why the sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry very. He stared down at Hooville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Hooville, the tall and the small, were singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It just came the same. And the Grinch, with his feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without sacks. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load to the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. The end. Thank you for listening. If you like this video and would like to see some more, remember to click the subscribe button. Till next time.